Fuel injection is the way of the future. It makes more power, it has easier cold starts, and it's overall more efficient. When swapping to fuel injection, there's some more things to think about than just bolting on like a throttle body like this Holly Sniper 2. But we're gonna cover those in our video today for you guys so you just have a really good idea of what you need to do to make your old carbureted vehicle into a TBI modern driver. Before we get to that, make sure to like and subscribe to the Summit Racing YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of the action. The first thing we're gonna talk about is plumbing and return or returnless systems. Now with a return style system, you have a line that goes all the way from up by your throttle body and it returns unused fuel to the tank. And returnless, you'll hear us talk about those, and it's a Corvette returnless style system is the most popular. They're really popular with LS swaps. Now, it looks like a fuel filter with three barbs out of it. You have a feed line that goes up to the fuel filter, and then you have two more that come out the other side, that one goes to the rail or your throttle body, and then the other one comes back to the filter, and so you don't have to run a line all the way back to the tank. They're limited at 58 PSI, or should I say regulated at 58 PSI, but they do have their limitations. They're good for about a 500 horsepower application, and it's roughly about a 65 to 67 gallon per hour pump. Any more than that will cause the regulator function of it to fail. Next, we're gonna talk about fuel lines. Now, if you're doing a swap like this to swap the fuel injection, you're gonna to wanna to think about replumbing all the fuel lines on your car because a lot of times the old rubber lines on an old carbureted car are not rated for modern fuel injection pressures. There's a bunch of different ways to do it and summitracing.com has all the options for you. So next we're gonna start talking about fuel pumps and there's two different styles of fuel pumps. You have an external and an internal. A lot of guys favor the internal pumps for fuel injection swaps for a couple of reasons. They run cooler, they last longer, and they're not as susceptible to fuel slosh and stuff like that. But if you put this thing in a hardcore race car or something like that, you know, they have options for that. You have baffled tanks. Holly actually has some really cool stuff called Hydromat that, you know, if you guys haven't seen the video, it'll pick like fuel up out of the one corner if the whole thing's out. Great for fuel injection. But anyway, now an external pump, they run a little bit hotter and you're gonna wanna mount them below your fuel tank because these pumps aren't really pushers. When buying a fuel pump and kind of addressing it, you're gonna wanna do a little bit of research on what's gonna work best for your system. Next, we're gonna talk about fuel filters. Now on a Sniper 2 kit like this, they actually run two fuel filters and an external pump in their master kit. You have kind of a coarser before the pump and then a really fine micron filter after the pump. So you can do it a couple ways. You know, they have ones you can clean. You can run, you know, regular style GM ones, which a lot of guys favor because you can just go right to the parts store and get one. But you're gonna wanna run fuel filters because fuel injection requires really, really clean filtered fuel. Next on the list is ignition components. And we're gonna talk about those because there's a couple different ways you can skin that cap. Now say we were converting a mid-year Corvette that has an original points distributor in it. Will it work with our Holly? Yes, and it will work well, but there's better options out there. You know, some guys like to put an electronic pickup in them, or you can swap to an HEI style GM distributor, which is really popular, you know, where it's got the coil and everything built in. A lot of guys love those. Or Holly has an even cooler distributor that'll drop right in with a Holifax style ignition. And you know, that's the cool thing about this sniper stuff is that they have a whole host of things that all work together to just make your swap as easy as possible. We're gonna start to talk about fuel pressure regulators again. And you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, you're gonna need to regulate your fuel pressure, especially if you put a big rowdy pump in this thing, you know, it only needs about 58 pounds. That's kind of the sweet spot for that stuff. So if you have a pump that puts out 100 PSI, you're gonna to wanna to dumb that down or the thing's gonna spring leaks and you know, you're gonna blow things out and it's not gonna work correctly. A good fuel regulator is key to this because you don't want it to fail and you know, bad things happen. Now the other daunting part about a fuel injection swap, which turns a lot of guys away, is the wiring. Now with the Holly here, wiring is as simple as it gets. You know, they make this thing truly plug and play and it's really easy to do. You're just gonna need some basic supplies, you know, some wire crimpers. Um, I'm a weather pack guy, so I, you know, like to use those on everything versus, you know, solder connectors or that kind of deal. So if you're going the weather pack route, obviously you're gonna need some of the, the special crimpers, a good set of wire strippers, the, the pin tools to get that stuff in and out. But it's worth going to the swap and Summit Racing offers a full weather pack kit to get your car plumped. 
Now, depending on the quality and health of your electrical system, if you're doing a fuel injection swap, it also might be worth thinking about doing a complete wiring harness swap in your car putting in an older car, you get a couple extra fuse spots, a nice new brand new wire that you don't have to worry about, you know, being brittle and breaking. Cause that's one of the things you have to think about on some of these older cars that were fuel injection swapping is that they've seen better days. They're 40, 50, 60 years old. So those wiring harnesses have been through the ringer and you know, it's safety is key when it comes to this stuff. So if you're worried about kind of the health of your harness, it might be worth swapping to something new. Now, the one thing you notice I didn't put on this list is dyno tuning. And that's because like a Sniper 2 system here, you know, you do the setup wizard, you answer a couple questions and you start driving this thing and it tunes itself and it's demanding that optimal air fuel ratio. And the more you drive it, the better it gets and it's just gonna be happier as it learns more. Now, the cool part about this on the flip side, if you are a tuner, you know, you can jump right in this Sniper 2 deal and you can make your own custom tunes but you don't have to go get this thing dyno tuned. You know, it's not like using a, a, an aftermarket tuning system or something like a standalone ECM where dyno tuning is gonna be your best bet and it, it doesn't self learn. Now, if you guys have any more questions about a fuel injection swap or you know, you're looking for parts, head over to summitracing.com or call into our tech line and the folks over there will get you exactly what you need and get that stuff heading to your house so you can get a fuel injection swap. So comment below and tell us what your favorite fuel injection system is. And you know, if there's anything I missed that's a must on this list, we'd love to hear from you guys. So until next time, I'm Justin with Summit Racing and thanks for watching.